Hi everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I am working on this vintage brass fireplace uh, fire log holder. It is the beautiful claw foot design and it is so dirty that at a glance you can't tell if it's brass or copper. Um, with this green patina in here, it, I was leaning towards it might be copper, but when you look at the legs, it looks brass. So maybe it's brass and copper. So we need a good cleanup. Um, something was cleaned nearby with it, probably a brush. And we want to try to clean this up and give it a good look. I'd like to keep some of the patina to it, but that's really hard to do. As you can see, it's covered in cobwebs. This thing was stored in a semi-storage trailer for years. I can see at some point there was a sticker here. Maybe, you know, someone tried to sell it or left it behind. The origin of it is just kind of unknown. We think it came with a house that we bought and that they left it behind. So I have on hand natural lemon oil polish. And this is Parker and Bailey. I picked this up at Menards for about $4 or $5 a bottle. And I have it on hand. Generally when I clean things to sell on Etsy, I just give things um, a quick cleaning with this to leave aged patinas. I have seen uh, some videos in the past where people have used Barkeeper's Friend. I actually had this on hand uh, many years ago. Uh, I actually found it under the sink at our old house and a bottle of Brasso um, also left behind. Um, these are things that I don't normally invest in. We do a lot of natural cleaners, things like uh, salt, peroxide, lemon, um, different uh, homemade cleaner. So this is going to need a little extra scrubbing. And I thought this was a good day to do this. We are having kind of a freeze thaw effect going on and the roads are slippery. It's a good day to get this cleaned up and get it listed for sale. So the first thing I'm going to do is just give it a quick clean up in some areas with the lemon oil. I want to see really what's underneath this dirt. Now a lot of people really prefer the aged patina. As you can see, this was a little bit overloaded with firewood and that can easily be uh, kind of shaped back with a little bit of coaxing generally from just pushing it with your hands, tapping on it. And that's a lot of times where I will get um, something like a two by four and a mallet and just start tapping on it. Just like, uh, think of car repairs. So see, that already looks a lot better. Just not having it all dry and dusty. So here's it just wiped down quickly with the lemon oil polish. It's looking a little better. Um, I would like to get maybe some more of this green off. And as I was cleaning it, I saw that there's some of the splatter on this side here. So I am going to go next for, oh, let's go for the barkeeper's friend. It's a lot like using a powdered Comet. I grew up using that as a bathroom cleaner growing up. So I'm going to go ahead and put some gloves on. I've got a bucket with some sponges and some warm water because I am not fond of having the chemicals touch my hands because I get a lot of contact dermatitis. Um, it is chemicals. So uh, in lieu of this, you could try the baking soda and scrub that in as well. very quickly taking layers of darkness off of it which these days not so many people are having dark fireplaces so I think having it shining a bit I don't know how far I want to take it but I think shining a bit would be beneficial um, in helping it sellability or appeal 
it on here. It doesn't seem to be lifting. Just remember to keep your sponge a little wet. Now, as you can see, I'm not scrubbing very hard. a little off to see what we're getting here and you can see that's quite dirty So here I am with about five to 10 minutes of scrubbing. Of course, there's different wear, different age uh, patina uh, through the different layers and the barkeeper's scrub got off some of the residue of the tape that had been there and some of the green patina. Um, I see things like this and I just think, oh, it's just old and ugly. Well, it's looking a little better depending on your taste. So to me, it looks splotchy. It's more brassy on this side than this. And if this stuff is plated and not solid brass or even solid copper, it's not gonna polish up great. And this is why I usually never polish anything unless it's a newer brass item because this aged patina is not something that you can put back. Um, the reason for me doing it in large uh, part is the splattering. I think this is paint or varnish. And of course, these legs, these feet on it are a key thing about this. It's got this nice detailed hardware. It's not just your basic, you know, like target threshold uh, kind of stuff. This is very old. Um, if it came from where I think the house was built in 1952, I believe, and this looks like it's older than that. Now, I've seen these on Etsy, um, unpolished, for $80 to $200. This is quite large. Now, we burn firewood primarily in our house, and this would be totally full a day's worth of firewood. It's just a nice thing to have. They're also beautiful with a blanket rolled up in them if you don't have a fireplace. So now we're going to go ahead and try the Brasso and see what kind of a polish we can get with this. The Brasso is made for pewter, chrome, copper, and stainless. So while I have this out, it's good to go ahead and touch up anything else in the house that you need done. So now for the Brasso. Give it a good shake and we're just going to rub this on lightly you let it dry and then you rub it or buff it to remove it now this is very strong smelling so i don't recommend using this if you are pregnant uh, ventilate if possible and maybe put the pets out if you have pets in the house Now 
I scrubbed the handle with Brasso, um, or the barkeeper's friend, and it didn't change the handle much. And I was using the coarse scrubbing side. Now, I don't know if this is a really old bottle and it's not going to set up right, but it seems to be it was uh, thicker before and it may have frozen at some point. We'll see. I could just imagine this staged with a little fireplace vignette with some beautiful candlesticks, maybe a old quilt, some beautiful wood in it split or maybe birch looks really pretty or beech wood. All right, we'll let this dry and we'll come back to it to buff it. Cleaning up pretty well. These leaf type feet, I thought they were just claws before, but it's a leaf kind of with a claw. So I'll get it turned over here. Uh, the key to this barkeeper's friend is kind of getting it out. I think it's best to keep it as pasty, applying it as you can. To kind of help cut through that. And keep rinsing because the amount of dirt coming off of this and this particular room I've just got an old linoleum floor and it was the best place to do this to not have any harsh cleaners like on my new porcelain tub or anything. So this is my bottom. You can see how those cleaned up but it did not cut through these speckles. So I could try acetone to try to get through this or possibly even a light sanding of a fine grit sandpaper. Don't know. Don't know that that's gonna help without scratching up the metal. Um, I like the way it's looking. It definitely looks brass now instead of copper. But the Brasso didn't do much for me on the inside. Like the product is too old. It didn't want to dry up to buff. So I'm going to give this a rinse and then give it another scrubbing with the barkeeper's friend to see how much um, we can maybe get the edges uh, lightened up. So here I'm just trying to get some symmetry in the curve <laughs> of the whole piece. Um, as I said, it had been overloaded at some point, and the best way to do that, I found, is uh, the pliers. These are locking pliers, or vice grips, and I'm actually able to bend this back um, to where it once was. The wood, as far as tapping it with a mallet, was just wanting to bounce back, and this has a rolled edge that's pressed, and it was a little goofed up at the edge, and I had the players uh, vice grips out for that. So I found this was a real good way to do that. And a good indicator of having the correct uh, curve going on is seeing how your feet are. These feet are a cast brass, so they are not gonna bend on me. Um, they're a little bit uneven. So we have to keep that in mind and just keep this edge going. And I'm trying to just do it. Uh, brass is very soft. That's why I'm able to do this. And it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to look better than it did. It was very misshapen before. See how this foot wants to sit down on the floor and this one doesn't but once it's loaded um, or with a little more bit more coaxing then we'll have that and you can see I still have uh, some polishing to do on it but I washed it up 
with the barkeeper's friend, um, a second scrub. And that's why I don't usually sell any of my uh, brass, copper, pewter, silver as polished. It takes a lot of time to do that. I have maybe 40 minutes of time into this at this point. And to me, it looked nicer uh, unpolished with that vintage patina. And like I said, you know, once you start scrubbing that, you can't get it off. After the first layer, it just looked like rusty metal um, from the patina. And frankly, I'm just kind of tired of scrubbing at this point, but this is what I've got. And this is just patina, but pictured, it looks like rust. So I think it's important in staging this to sell that you put wood in it, um, maybe put a bow on top or here on the side, something to you know, kind of make it look aesthetically pleasing other than just an old looking beat up log holder. Okay, so now we just start staging it up for some photos. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, take some pictures of this for Etsy with blankets rolled up in it and logs. One thing I just always want to say about that is make sure that your background looks as clean or as inviting as possible because people who um, are looking at those pictures may see something in your background. Um, I've noticed this on eBay um, that make you cringe and not buy an item and may possibly lead a buyer to somebody else, whether it's for more money or less money, just based off of photos alone. Um, another good tip is... I just have like silent videos where you're just kind of panning um, the item like this and showing the detailed features because Etsy actually has like analytics that shows you um, listings with videos get more sales than videos um, listings without videos. So like here I go through a little pet peeve thing. I used to work as a library assistant. My kids like to mess up my bookshelves. So, you know, if you could have like vintage um, books, catalogs, things like that in the background, it all helps. So as you can see, I've switched it out from the blankets to the logs, decorated it with just a little bit of ribbon, keep it simple so that they can still see the item for sale, not just your staging. You're going to want to take pictures um, or document for your listing in the description, any measurements, any flaws or details, such as, you know, like um, unevenness. We tried to straighten it out the best we can, and so we always put things listed as um, vintage condition, not like new because it is, you know, a used item. Show these details in, in your photos. Have good lighting. Um, you can see how I didn't uh, overly aggressive do the edges of any scrubbing because that's how you know things kind of naturally wear um, take a picture of it you know unloaded so they can see it that way also I hope these cleaning tips and listing um, tips help you with your Etsy growth this year 2024 is hopefully going to be a great year for us for Etsy 2023 was pretty good and it always ends with a nice solid note around Christmas January is always hard, so it's important to get out there thrift, um, clean out your stash, do some cleaning like this that has been sitting and waiting. This is something I probably should have had for sale in November, but it just kind of kept getting pushed around and pushed around. It actually got buried, resurfaced, and I knew that this was a great day to get this listed because there's still a good three to four solid months of hearth displays, fireplace burning going on, and it's an excellent time to just be warm and cozy in your home, shopping, cuddling, reading, things like that. And I think that a posting like this is really going to come across nicely for any home and people will like it. So remember, lighting, lots of pictures, answer questions promptly, keep things clean, don't send things out in shipping in cobwebs, have good solid sturdy boxing and packaging, 
and your customers will be happy. So thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.